Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen ratings again? All right. Are we back? Tell me we're back. We're back. All right. Good deal. I'm sorry. I could not tell, man. I guarantee it. Because I'm at the home 20 down with the COVID. But anyway, tickled to death that we have John Rinkin on with us. Good morning, sunshine. How are you, brother? Good morning, man. How y'all doing? Oh, we're doing good. I'm getting about froze to death out here in Georgia. Where are you at? Anyway, you said you were traveling. Uh, yeah, I'm actually in Oklahoma right now. It's a little chilly, but it's not going to be too bad. What the heck are you doing out there? Uh, I actually babysit cats in the wintertime. Yeah, when you say cats, you're talking about <laughs> not kitty cats. Yeah, yeah. Well, children, I should say, but yeah, they're about <laughs> 450 pounds. How many are you babysitting? I actually babysit three. Wow, that is crazy. I asked one of the reasons I wanted to have you back on because I've got uh, I've got uh, Doctor uh, Ed on with us here, that is a dog trainer. He's scared to death of cats, and uh, he said he actually worked with somebody that you work with. Who is it, Ed? Bhagavan Antal. Yes, yes, Doctor Antal, a really nice guy. Yeah, I um I was working for as a field rep for the Humane Association, and then I got back into doing some training commercially, and he came to me. We were down in uh, Myrtle Beach. I'm sorry, we're down in Savannah, and he came to me, and we were doing some alligator work, and he said anybody who'd sit on the back of an alligator for eight hours would probably like coming up to my compound and maybe doing some work with big cats. And next thing I knew, I was in Puerto Rico uh, <laughs> with the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't yeah, wait, I couldn't wait to get back really to dogs. He has a really amazing facility, man. It's just, he, he does a really good job up there. Yeah, well taken care of animals and a nice facility. But uh, I have to admit, when I got back to working with dogs, it took me a little while because, you know, when you're used to working with six, seven, eight hundred pound animals and all of a sudden you walk into the office and you have a 85 pound Rottweiler, you have to remember you can't do the same thing as you did with the big cats with an 85 pound dog because he bounces all over the place. But, well, a dog, uh, a, a dog will only bite you. A cat will eat you. See, there's a difference in that. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, you know, really. So, I mean, when you baby, how do you, what do you mean babysit cats? I don't understand in the wintertime. Why you would babysit cats? What's the difference in that in the summer? So my, I'm actually helping out a friend of mine, and uh, he has a circus. And in order for him to get away and go on vacation, somebody has to be with the cats. Somebody has to be with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he can't get away. So it gives them a chance to get away. That's crazy. Me, I, John, I just think you're crazy to fool with them things because they're so dangerous, but it's just common daily stuff for you. And like I said, y'all don't know, John, he was actually on the Tiger King season. Uh, how long was you on that? Uh, I'm in all the episodes, believe it or not. <laughs> but I was actually at the zoo for 14 years. Uh, well, I reckon he's supposed to be, uh, you know, we was reading the other day, they're going to re retry him or resentence him or something, trying to get him out. Yeah, he gets a resentencing at the end of the month, uh, the 28th. Uh, in Oklahoma City, they when they put all the penalties together, it was illegal for them to do, so they have to redo it. So you think he's going to get out? Or how long do you get sentenced for anyway? I don't know. He got 22 years for, you know, he had 17, 19 charges, 17 charges. Two of them were murder for hire, which no money changed hands, so I don't know how they got that. But 17 were the Endangered Species Act charges, and those were all misdemeanors, and I don't know. He got way, way too long, that's for sure. Yeah, he's a weird dude. I'm sorry. I know he's a friend of yours, but he's a weird dude. They all are. They all are. I say it season one. You know, animal people are nuts. Yeah. Well, I mean, this guy right here is like the top. I mean, if you look up animal people, his picture's there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Why do you think yeah. I work with Steven? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they needed somebody who could that's come in and work one. with primates. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Ed's is close right there with it, though, to Anyway, but now the season, they said it had a, like another season they were going to release or something. Whatever happened to that? Um, yeah, there's actually, you know, they released season two early in December. And then December 10th, they come out with the uh, Tiger King, the Doc Antle story. Right. So they actually have uh, episode five episodes about Doc Antle. So in his life, um, it's all I, I mean, everybody can look on there. It's animal rights motivated and they're just trying to tear Doc Antle down, down now. So. Uh, eventually, they just want everybody to relinquish their cats and not have cats in, in captivity anymore. And that's that's what their goal is. See, I think they ought to free. I think dogs ought to be free. I think they ought to free kitty cats. I think everything should be free. I think everything should be free. When it takes all. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your day when you take care, when you're babysitting three? How big are these cats that you, you're babysitting? Um, I have two, uh, two tigers, and uh, they're elderly tigers. They're 18 years old. And I say elderly because they'll live to be 20, 22 years. 
Uh, and then I just have a juvenile lion right now. He's just a year old. So I get to, I'll interact with them. I'll feed them, clean their cages, uh, fix anything that needs to be fixed around here. Um, it, it, it's a whole lot easier now because I only have three cats versus 187. So uh, my right. day's a whole lot easier. I just cannot imagine. I, I would be terrified to go in with a cat. I mean, honestly. And uh, you can't show fear. If you show fear, you lose respect. So, so now the older, what it's about. This one that these older cats are they, you know, like you know, like people when they get older, like Ed, they just get more grumpy. Oh. Are, are they grumpier or are they laid <laughs> yeah. back more? Yeah, they get grumpier. They get grumpier. You start seeing it in their walk, you know, they're they're a little slower. Um the female we have is she still thinks she's young, so she runs around and jumps around and stuff, but uh our older male's getting a little older, so he just lays around a That's lot. Typical. And, That's typical. Yeah, That's yeah. typical, right, of a man, Stephen? Yeah. Older, yeah. <laughs> grumpy, lay slower, lay around. Don't yeah. Do anything. <laughs> hey, John, what was your feeling on what was your feeling on the ligers? Uh, you know, they're amazing creatures. Uh, you know, it would never happen in the wild. But uh, what is wild? What is the wild nowadays? There's yeah. very little wild left. So uh, it, it's going to happen when you have a lot of cats. You get a lion and a tiger together. Um, they're both felines. They're both cats. Um, you know, some people think it's just pushing the envelope of uh, evolving, but uh, they're amazing creatures. You know, Doc Antle had one of the largest yep. in history. Um, yep. They're 1,000 pounds. I mean, they are yep. huge cats. Shankar was one of them that I worked with, and what I thought was really interesting, out of all of the big cats, they were the more docile. Yes. Yes. So now, what? What tell us what this is, Ed? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> a liger. It's father's a lion, the mother's a tiger. Okay. Tiger. It's pretty much my yep. favorite animal. <laughs> <laughs> so mix between a lion and a tiger. <laughs> pretty good with a bow Napoleon stand. Dynamite. <laughs> See, Stephen, someone else gets someone our else joke, gets man. it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> this Packy and I felt so alone for years. Stephen didn't get our humor at all. I'm telling you, I'm not a Star Wars guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> someday, uh, just, someday, Stephen, I will. We'll take a ride down to Myrtle Beach, and I'll introduce you to Doc Antle, and and you could take go in one of the cages and play with some of the big cats. They'd love you. Mm. Yeah, I bet they Tasty. would. Uh, Maybe in a garbage to, man. Go in the summertime, so that way bubbles can throw you out in the river. Oh you know, yeah. I, I have a cute story about bubbles. We went down that back dirt road, and we went out to the intercoastal with bubbles and there were some gentlemen on a big yacht and obviously had a few too many cocktails but you know that's just not something you expect to see in uh, in the waterway to have an african elephant who's playing in the water and these guys almost took out a dock you could see their boat like bearing off like oh my god what is that and they almost that's took funny. out a whole dock bubbles was something I, else i bet that is a sight so you now you're you're babysitting or house sitting or dog, uh, cat sitting for for a guy that's got a circus. I didn't think there was any circuses left. There is. There's very few left. Um, there's a handful of them still out there, and uh, there's a very few have animal acts. Right. Uh, they pretty much stopped all of them, and, and they feel the same way I do. You know, a circus is uh, lions and tigers and horses and and trapeze and clowns, and I mean it makes a circus. So. He's going to keep going until they just tell him he can't take his animals out anymore. So he's going to keep trying. You know, I just think that's sad that there's no, I can remember going, that was a big thing when I was little, get to go to a circus. The Ringling Brothers and Barman Bay Bailey Circus would come to Atlanta. And man, we were excited to go down there and watch all this stuff. And, yeah. and they're like cruelty yeah. to animals. And I mean, now you're in on the, okay, you're on the inside looking out as far as cruelty to animals. How cruel are y'all all to, to these animals? I mean, y'all beat these things every day and, and starve you know, them to death. It's a, bis it's a huge misconception that circuses mistreat their animals. These cats have it better than I do. I live, I'm staying in this camper right here. It's a little bitty thing. They got a big compound. They have heated and air conditioned housing. They have outside housing. Um, they get fed every day, fresh meat. Um, it's amazing that how well they're taken care of. And just right down the road, there's 26 Asian elephants that get to retire in a real nice facility and don't have to perform no more. And they really, really taken care of really well, but all of the old stories and the old videos, they say that they're abused and it's just, it sticks with you and you can't, you can't kick it. I mean, it's there. I don't think people understand when the animals are your livelihood, you're gonna treat them very well. You're gonna make sure they're proper, 
properly veterinarian cared for. You're going to make sure they're getting the proper nutrition. They're going to be housed in good facilities. And that's what people don't seem to understand. Um, I had an opportunity years ago to meet Gunther Gable Williams. And, you know, he used to come under a great deal of attack from groups like PETA and things like that. And this was a man whose passion were his animals. It's just like the rodeo. The rodeo is going through the same thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's cities in uh, Colorado. You can't even have a rodeo anymore. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. You know, John, you kind of got a disadvantage, you know, like me, if I was out there and the tiger got after me, I, I think I could outrun him. <laughs> you ain't got no legs. They don't want me. I don't taste good. <laughs> okay. All right, well, how do you run with no legs? I mean, Steven. Uh, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see I'd like to see Stephen run. running from a tiger. That'd be worth a video I right think there. It would be too. My gosh. That's well, better than we, got, we actually put a challenge out at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year for the new year. Um, we're gonna put Steven in the suit and we're gonna let him uh, have some of our protection dogs bite him. And I think that is just going to be worth it. And then we thought, well, why have one bite him? Why don't we have two bite him at the same oh, time? Oh, yeah, why not? It's just and this and is heck, why, wear, why wear a suit? <laughs> this is a fundraiser you could do. I mean, think of the money you could raise for a children's charity. You, you know what? We could raise money See, for I want to do this for T. Hey, what about, what, I wanted what, what, to taste Stephen for, Paws, for money. Yeah. Yeah, but what about Stephen's charity? I need a charity. I'm a charity. You are a I charity. justice after <laughs> two of our dogs bit. bite you. I'm You'll need a bit. charity. I want the cash. I want the cash. Now, John, you still racing, man? You still racing? I am. I am. Getting ready for the new season. Yeah, well, now what class? Are you still in the pony class, or what are you running? Uh, I'm actually going to get a factory stock this year. I'm going to move up, and uh, I've got another guy. My son used to drive my modified, so uh, he's on the road being a surgical tech now, so I have to get a new driver for that. Um, I got way too much money invested in that car for me to get in it, so uh, yeah. I don't want to tear it up, so. I'm going to get a factory stock, a full body car this year instead of the little four cylinder car. And uh, I'm going to give it my best. Well, now you're running, you live in, actually live in Louisiana, right? I, I actually live in Texas. Oh, you're in Texas. I was thinking you was in Louisiana. Yeah. No, I'm in Texas. I live right on the border on I 44 corridor. Um, Lawton's 30 miles north of me, and Wichita Falls is eight miles south of me. Oh, so, that's uh, not even the pretty part of Texas. What are you doing there? No. I used to live in no, Lawton, it's not. Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's not a good city. I'm gonna stay out here in Georgia. Of course, we're about to freeze <laughs> to death out here. But I'd love to come watch you run sometime. But I was thinking you were down in Louisiana. What what tracks do you actually do? You run just local tracks, or do you travel with that? Um, I run local tracks, but you know, since the Tiger King come out, you know, in the Tiger King, I'm wearing an Eldora Speedway shirt, and it has absolutely just blown up my racing community with people knowing me. Um, Tony Stewart's reached out to me. Uh, Parker Price Miller's reached out to me. So many of these uh, sprint car guys are just, they come to our area and, and they look me up as soon as they get here. So they've been asking me to come out and do some of the races that they go to. So I've been thinking that and kicking that around, but I'm just, I'm just a normal guy. You know, you know we didn't make no money off Netflix. We didn't get paid for none of that. So oh, I, yeah. just, I just, I work every day. I have to work to survive. So uh, um, I don't really have the income that them guys do to have to travel way far off. But uh, we go down to Dallas and race and stuff and Abilene, and we move around a little bit. You know, that's the thing. People think just because you're on TV, you're making money. But I know a lot of a lot of people yeah. that we have on that are actually, you know, on these shows are not making money. They're having to do it by selling T-shirts and getting out and working, and this, that, and other. But now, if you can get running with Tony Stewart, they say he is an absolutely sweetheart of a guy, man. And I mean, that'd be cool. That would be absolutely. If you do that, he holler, I'll, I'll be your jack. He's man. amazing. I'll, I'll be the guy that changes the tire. I'll come hang out too with you. <laughs> We can always use help, you know, you and go. Tony Stewart recently just married Leah Pritchard, you know, who is a uh, NHRA drag racer. She drives a top field dragster. So uh, right. now Tony Stewart's getting into drag racing. Hey, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, I like circle track a whole lot better, man. I just can't see spending all that money to run three to six seconds. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I feel the same way, but you know what? If you've never been to an NHRA drag race, You're oh my God. It. Yeah, you're missing it. See, I love I it. love the drag race, and I think the drag racing is king. Standing down there on that bleach box, that's the best place to be. I yeah. like stock class, man. I like knock the windows out, put a roll cage in, and go race. That's to there me. There you right. go. Yeah, that's what I. There like. you go. If these folks out here is listening, want to keep up with you, John, and maybe support, you, maybe send some money and sponsor your race car. How do they get up with you, man? Hey, I always need race car sponsors. I promise you. Hey, I'm on all the social medias. Just look up John Rinky Tiger King. Um, I'm out there. 
uh, I try and promote everything. I got Twitter, Facebook, uh, Snapchat. I even have a TikTok, believe it or not. So uh, I'm out there. I'm not hard to find. And the biggest thing, everybody's scared to talk to you. You know, don't be afraid to come up and say hi. I'm not that guy that's going to chew your head off, man. It's, don't be scared. There you go. No, I know, John. I've known him for a while here, and he is a great guy. And I do appreciate you coming on this morning. We've got to get to break. And like I said, we support you. And uh, anything else come up, give us a holler and let us know, okay? We'll sure do it. Thank John, you for having nice me Nice talking on. to you. Nice talking right. to y'all. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.